only yesterday Do you recall Dreams were things that all came true When the grown-up world Was old and tall Love and we were small and new Only yesterday We walked away From our fairy tales and toys Leaving all our castles Made of clay For some future girls and boys Time to rearrange The games of you Learning that the new rules Come with age Some things never change Like love and truth Though life keeps turning its pace Now with each new day I realize Since you're gone I've lost my way Come and bring me back Those love-filled eyes I saw only we come to part two of our marathon marriage program and I'm going to use this portion to answer questions concerning my lecture on the perfect mate. You said you were his secretary. That doesn't make me a mind reader. <laughs> When's the doctor coming? In his own time. You know how he likes to make an entrance. The reporters are here. They're getting impatient. I'll offer them another drink. Uh, look, where is Mrs. Lorde? <laughs> Mrs. Nordek? Yes. Is it true your husband is planning to open a clinic in Switzerland? No idea. Well, is Dr. Nordek still thinking of having a TV program as well as his weekend column? Of 
quite possibly. It has been rumored that you handle all the letters from women and your husband all the letters from men. Would you care to comment on this? It's nonsense. Ah, now, surely he asked for your advice on several occasions. Look, I, I really think you'd better wait and ask him these questions yourselves. Of course, I've known the doctor ever since he had his picture on the front page of one of those glossy colored supplements. No, 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 he didn't. What was it, dear? Well, it was, uh, oh, I can't remember. Uh, you publish his earlier books, I understand. Uh, yes, indeed. You must make a lot of money. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, when is the doctor turning up, Mrs. Nordick? He'll be here any minute. That's what his secretary said half an hour ago. Well, if you really want to see him, you'll just have to wait until he wants to see you, won't you? Hello, Sue. Who is this Dr. Nordick, anyway? I've never heard of him. What do you mean? You're in his house. Well, all I do is follow the miniskirts. Oh. <laughs> so much of the doctor's knowledge must be based on his relationship with you. Uh, our readers would love to know what you as a woman find the main trials and tribulations of being married to a prominent man. Answering reporters on his behalf. I see. And uh, the greatest joy? I don't remember. Now, if you'll excuse uh, me. Mrs. Nordick, just one more question for the record. Why do you and Dr. Nordick have no children? <laughs> You must always remember that marriage is a sacrament, the binding together of two lives in mutual trust and affection. I hardly think your 17 months of marriage, correction, seven months of marriage are sufficient to judge whether your union is a success or a failure. Charles? My advice to you is to start afresh on the cornerstones of faith, patience, and tenderness. You're keeping your public waiting. Patience and tenderness. What am I going to tell Peter? Oh, for God's sake, woman. He'll be here this morning. To carry you away on a big white horse. Stop playing the fool. We've been over this so many times. Oh, very well. Now, as I understand it, you're prepared to give me sufficient grounds to divorce you. Oh, by the way. Will it be something exciting and new, like cohabitation in a Brighton hotel with Mr. X? Or will it merely be something we already know? In other words, will Peter be the correspondent in the courts, as well as the lover in bed? Charles, I can't humble myself any further. But you're prepared to humiliate me. Don't try and pretend you're the injured husband. If you ever love me, you stopped doing so a long time before I met Peter. You knew what was happening, and you encouraged it. It left you more time for work. Quite true, my dear. Regrettable, but quite true. Men must work, and women must be loved. The way of all flesh. All we are asking is the freedom to go away, get married, and live... In happy sin. Well, why don't you go away, then? Run away. You know why. Oh, yes. You've a perfect right to want children. But I do agree it would be much more considerate to marry the father first. I don't suppose the paper Peter works for looks favorably on their foreign correspondents breeding an illegitimate family in their spare time. Do you? Oh, hello. Hello. You're looking very smart. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have you seen Mrs. Norday? Well, I think she went to look for the doctor. She shouldn't be long. Oh. Let me get you a drink. Well, that's very kind of you. Ah, thank you. Cheers. Did you have a good trip? Or tour, as you called? Uh, routine, thank you. Well, I suppose that's good. Where was it this time? Rome, Delhi, Bangkok? Houston. Oh, I've never been to Houston. I've never been to Bangkok. <laughs> I don't see how you can put up with this emptiness any more than I can. It would be difficult if I shared your one-eyed view of marriage. Fortunately, I can grasp something a little deeper, something beyond the confines of a double bed. A thousand pages of solid, sensible advice to dubious virgins, disappointed wives, callow youths, and clumsy husbands. Nordic is the name you can trust. 
what every man and woman needs to know in order to ensure a satisfying lifetime relationship. Ten million people read this column every day because my name's at the top of it. And you ask me for a divorce. Are you being reasonable? Are you being fair? Peter and I love each other. I'm sure you do. And I love Bach. I love being rich. I love a good cigar and a bottle of wine. I love to write books. I love being famous and respected and having my books read all over the world. Why does that make me such an ogre and you such an angel? We're both selfish enough to want what we love. But you're talking about things and I'm talking about people. Things are more reliable. I'm sorry, Anne but it's a question of self-preservation. And the law is on my side, after all. Oh, I'll try to understand. Look, I'm sure we can come to some arrangement. Well, people are waiting for me. I'd better go change. Never knowing where you're going to be from one day to the next. Well, at least I'm not from Houston. Oh, silly. <laughs> let, let me get you another drink. Well, I haven't quite well, finished this one. Well, you better. There are a lot of heavy drinkers about. We're liable to run dry. Do you have a spare cigarette? Yes, yes, certainly. Thank you very much. Grace, not what not? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's all right. It's quite all right. Clumsy of me. Please let me. I'm so sorry. Oh, thank you very much. Ah. Oh. Oh, it's fine. I'll take it. No, no, I, I'll get it clean for you. There's no need. Please, I'd rather. All right. Better get you another cigarette. Okay. There you are. It's got your name and address inside. Yes. I hope you like menthol cigarettes. Yes, it's fine. Thank you very much. Excuse me. Let's get out of here. I want you to leave right now. Oh, darling, I can't. Once he realized you weren't coming back, he... He'd laugh at us. We'd be doing exactly what he wants, creeping about from one hotel to the next. Darling, we'd be living together. Yes, everything in the dark. Would you rather stay here? Hmm? Running away isn't going to help. It'll give us a chance. To do what? Raise a family out of suitcases. Is that really the best we have to hope for? How long are you going to wait? <laughs> Darling, don't you see? I want children. Your children. Charles would change his mind in time. Darling, you don't know him. You couldn't. You couldn't begin to understand his cruelty. He knows how I feel and he enjoys it. He enjoys the fact that I'm more unhappy than he is. It's negative, I know. You're a very positive person. But he's weak and frightened, and I suppose it gives him a sense of power. There's something I've never told you before. There was a time when I was going to have his child. I was so happy. I wanted it so desperately. 
When I told him, he looked at me as though he hated me. And he laughed. And that was the cruelest sound I've ever heard. He said, I must get rid of it. Those were his precise words. Get rid of it. And how can you? We had the most terrible round. He got awfully mad and he hit me. I don't really believe he, he meant to hurt me. Anyway, I fell. I lost the child. He was relieved. I'd like to kill him. Peter, if you really want to end it, you would understand. Darling, you're going to be my wife. Oh, there you are, Anne. Oh, what a lovely little retreat. Did you design it? No, it, it all came with the house. <laughs> the two of you look just perfect standing there. Very attractive. What did you say his name was? Peter. Peter Marion. Oh, it's so beautiful here. Just like a picture on a box of chocolates. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. You mustn't think I don't appreciate your point of view. I was brought up to believe in love covers all. Anna's leaving with me, and she won't be coming back. Very well. So whether you decide to divorce her or not? Not. We've agreed on that. We'll never see her again. Will the spawning of an illegitimate family be an aid to your career? That's my worry. Not entirely. When you find yourself out of a job, Who's going to provide for Anne? My job won't be in jeopardy, but I'm afraid it will. And as Anne's husband, I feel responsible for her welfare. My marriage is important to me for reasons you seem too dim-witted to understand. I have suffered you in my house for Anne's sake. Because you supplied a function I no longer have time for. But if you step over the line, you bastard. You're really going to fall on your face. Anne's happiness means nothing to you. I care about it a good deal more practically than you do. I pay her bills. I'm civil to her lover. All I ask in return is that she keep up appearances. Are you that indulgent? Excuse me. I have guests. Let her go. Can't you see what you're doing to her? Look, we've had a healthy man-to-man -man talk. You've got to let her go! Or you punch me in the nose. I'm warning you. Give me your wife, or I'll knock your teeth out. Logic of the caveman. Get out of my way. That's the most sensible thing you ever did in your life. Without this little lady, I'd be nowhere. And I never forget that. <laughs> Could you move a little closer, please, so I can get a tight shot? Oh, uh, uh, no, just a bit further left. That's fine. That's great. How about a kiss? Marvellous, <laughs> marvellous. <laughs> It's been reported that your planning's returned to the United States. Oh, really? Well, don't tell me you believe everything you read in the newspapers. <laughs> well, not that I know of. I still feel appreciated here. How are you, John? <laughs> it's good to see you. Come on, Andrew. Give me a hand with this. <laughs> they want your picture, too. <laughs> are you staying long this time? I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not on official leave, you know. I see. 
Oh, Eileen, don't you think it's about time we broke out the champagne? Why don't you see where it's got to? Oh, Peter, aren't you going to join the party? Come on, Peter. Now, here's a young man who ought to be married, but he's still looking for the right girl. I only hope that when he finds her, he doesn't discover that he's the wrong man. <laughs> yes, I did. I liked it very much. Yes. Oh, that's Well, Hayes just arrived. Handsome devil, isn't he? Sorry? There's no need to be. He's not private property, you know. Look, can we do the presentation now, Charles? I've got the book. Oh, of course. I think women should be equal to men. Well, I'm glad someone agrees with me at last. Uh, ladies, gentlemen, can I have your attention for a moment, please? How long are you going to wait? It's useless. He just won't listen. And I'm going to kill him. What else do you want us to do? We've begged, we've argued, we've planned, we've hoped, and we're nowhere. Darling, please don't shout at me. The man's using you. Peter, I married him. I know him. And you're going to swallow that for the rest of your life? Are you? Are you? then you must listen to me. And this will introduce a million more readers to the depth of his insight, the warmth of his humanity and personality. Uh, I'll ask Charles to autograph the books, and then we'll start the bidding. All the proceeds go to charity, remember? You're a very cynical young man, aren't you? No, just psychedelic and trendy. Now, shall I make a start with 100 pounds? Oh. 101? Oh. <laughs> What's it doing, Bernard? Auctioneering a first edition. It's going to be very valuable. Bernard, I'd love to own a first edition. I should learn to read first, if I were you, dear. Well, but I think I'm skipping to say. Oh, go on. Go on, dear. Let's Never do any answer. reading anyway. All you ever do is look at the picture papers. Five hundred. Five hundred, I bid. Five hundred once. Five hundred twice. Five hundred and fifty. Thank you, madam. Five hundred and fifty pounds, I'm bid. Five hundred and fifty pounds. And it was so... But you won't be involved. I'll take care of everything. All you've got to do is make a telephone call at exactly seven o'clock. Where from? The Jarrett's house. It doesn't matter where, as long as it's not too far. That's your alibi. Don't look up. Don't look up. 
Do you think the doctor reads his own books? Writing them must be bad enough. Well, he ought to. He's got a problem. She's a most attractive young lady. He's at least 15 years younger than he is. She has my sympathy, poor girl. Anyway, I think it's too late already. It didn't look to me as if they were discussing the doctor's books. Oh, go on, go on, go on. Now, remember, that's your alibi. And you've got to get straight back here as soon as you phone the police. Don't worry. It'll be all right. 800. 800, thank you. 800 pounds, ladies and gentlemen. 800, into what's an 800? If I told you you had a beautiful body, would you uh, hold it against me? If I told Dr. Nordek how you got in here, he might have you thrown out. No, you don't really mean that, do you? I think so. One thousand pounds. One thousand pounds, ladies and gentlemen, I'm bid. I'll answer the call, pretending to be Charles. You must be sure to call me by his name. I like terrified. A madman has broken into the house, rampaging about with a gun. Total stranger, never seen him before. Ask you to call the police, then slam the receiver down as if he cut me off. And Charles? He'll be dead. I'll have killed him just before you phone. Nineteen fifty. Nineteen fifty, thank you, sir. Nineteen fifty pounds, nineteen fifty pounds. Any pounds on nineteen fifty? Nineteen fifty pounds. Two thousand. Two thousand pounds. Thank you, madam. Two thousand pounds, I'm now bid. Ladies and gentlemen, two thousand pounds. Any pounds on two thousand pounds? Two thousand pounds. Two thousand and fifty. Two thousand and fifty pounds. Thank you, sir. Two thousand and fifty pounds, I'm now bid. Any pounds on two thousand and fifty pounds? For the last time, ladies and gentlemen, two thousand and fifty pounds once, two thousand and fifty pounds twice. Sold to Mr. Rubens. <laughs> Two thousand and fifty pounds. Thank you very much, Mr. Rubens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take a check, Charles. I'm a little short of cash. <laughs> Tell me what I'll do. You inscribe it personally to Dodie and me, and I'll make it 2,500. How's that? It's a deal. <laughs> That was a wonderful idea, Doctor. Where will you donate the money? I haven't thought. Have you any suggestions? It's a lot of money. Yes, I suppose it is. Peter, it'll never work. Why won't it? You're sure there will be no one else here on Saturday evening? Well, yes, but... I've got a key to get in. Charles will be here alone. You tell the police he said he was being attacked by someone he had never seen before. And that's what they'll believe. I'll make it look as if someone broke into the house. And there'll be nothing to connect either of us. Suppose somebody sees you. They won't. It'll be getting dark, and I'll have parked the car a few blocks away. Oh, thank you. Ah, can I give you a lift, then? No, thank you. Ah, you still don't trust me? I have my own car. Oh, then you can give me a lift, then. Well, well, you see, I'll ask my husband. Peter, he keeps a gun. Where? In that top drawer. He keeps it unlocked. That's even better. If I use his own gun, I won't have to get rid of it. Suppose he gets to it first. He won't. Why is it you shy away from what is most important to you? I don't know what you mean. Are you afraid of being hurt? And everybody. Well, I'll see you later. All right. Not the person knows what he wants and means to get it, like me, for example. Or you, Peter. Bye. All right. Goodbye, Charles. Thank you, Yes, why not? I'll see you at lunch, Charles. Right, Andrew. If Dodie and I'll say goodbye, Charles. Is Annie around? Well, she certainly should be. Eileen, will you find my wife and ask her to be a proper hostess? Yeah. It's a wonderful party, Charles. Well, you're wonderful, wonderful. We really treasure these two. We really treasure these two. Well, for what you paid for it, it should be illuminated. <laughs> uh -huh. All in a good cause. <laughs> certainly is. See you at lunch. Oh, 
darling, darling, what are we doing? It'll all be over in a couple of months. Then we could be in Europe, South America, wherever you like. If anything should happen to you... It won't. <laughs> the doctor's asking for you, Mrs. Nordic. People are beginning to leave. All right. Thank you, Arlene. Sorry again so soon. If you'd like to be with you a bit longer, you can have my place at the lunch. Well, it's not much of a sacrifice. I wasn't going anyway. I've got some letters to do. That's very kind of you. I'm sorry I can't take you up on it. For some other time, perhaps. It's been delightful, Doctor. My pleasure. I was just saying to Bernard, you and your wife make a most uncommon couple. In what way? Well, I, I don't know. Coordination, I suppose. Well, goodbye, my dear. Bonne chance. See you on Saturday. Don't let her fool you. That's all the Italian she knows. Why, <laughs> dear? I'm terribly sorry, but my husband said we're not going this way. Well, I haven't told you which way I'm going. <laughs> I, I say. Um. Where the devil's Eileen? I thought she'd booked the luncheon for 1.30. She told me she wasn't going. Oh, she did? Well, I suppose we needn't wait for her. If she's playing Cinderella, would you like the scrounge lunch, Peter? I'm driving home. Oh, I thought your heart was here. Well, I suppose we'll be seeing something of you again. Oh, dear. Parting such sweet sorrow. Would you like me to wait for you at the end of the gate? Remember, Paris, Rio, Rome. It's up to you. You know, I think Peter'd like to kill me. I only hope I'll be around when he has the guts for it. I love being famous and having my books read all over the world. Why does that make me such an ogre and you such an angel? At seven sharp, you'll call Charles and tell him you'll be a little late home. I'll answer the phone pretending to be Charles. You must be sure to call me by his name. I'll act terrified. A madman has broken into the house and is rampaging around with a gun. A total stranger, never seen him before. Ask you to call the police, then slam the receiver down as if he cut me off. And Charles? He'll be dead. I'll have killed him just before you phone. You'd worked this out before you came today. Yes. There's no reason why the police should question me at all. 
but for their benefit, I'll be visiting some friends of mine at a flying club in the end. Troops are deployed, and the reserves are in place. So I think we're about ready to start. I'm so glad you could come, my dear. Bernard gets so bored and he has to come on both sides. Now, my dear, as you are the guest, you may choose what you like. The noble cause or the winning army. No, please, you choose. Oh. oh well, in that case, I think I shall choose a flank attack. Do you think that's right, dear? Oh, shut up. I shall bring my men from the valley here and proceed onto the top of the hill number of your car? Yes. JXE 317D. It's a dark green Viscount. Yes. Where did you leave it? In my garage. Well, actually, I'm not here on official business. I've come to see you on a personal matter. What are you talking about? Did you write that article? And if I did? That's what I've come to see you about. At this point, I open up my artillery and score some heavy casualties. <sighs> there, they're all dead. No need to look so depressed, my dear. You've still got your reserves. Marriage is a sacrament, binding together two lives in mutual trust and affection. And so on. And my wife has fallen for every dribbling line of it. She thinks you're some kind of plaster saint. How touching. And what about me? She'd agreed to divorce me. Now she starts this turn-the-other-cheek stuff and we're right back to where we started. Look, you can't expect me to be responsible for how your wife reacts. What do you mean? You wrote to her and told her to forgive me and she has. Now, what the hell am I going to tell my girlfriend? You've got a girlfriend? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yesterday, my wife didn't want anything more to do with me. Today, she wants to start all over again. Have you rebuild our marriage? And I had everything fixed until you butted in. Look, do you think I could have a drink? Now then, at this point, I open up my artillery and score some heavy casualties. I want you to write to her again. Tell her you made a mistake, but she'd be far better off without me. 
She'd believe anything coming from you. Now, think about it. You'd better do something about it. I'll try. Yes, well... Now, if you don't mind. Yes, yes, I'm going. I'm sorry to burst in like this, but there didn't seem anything else I could do. Oh, thanks. Good night, sir. Is your clock right? Hmm? Listen. Not a sound. She must be dead. I forgot to wind her up. Then what is the real time? I don't know, my dear. Will you pass me that kernel behind the 25-pounder? Finding such sweet sorrow. You see people attack. I hear my men attack. Attack the door. You see? People go. In happy sin. Well, why don't you run away? Go on, then. I want children. Your children. Things are more reliable. I want, I want, I want. And I love her. And then he laughed. And he said I must get rid of it. And then he attacked him. And then he said, you want out? The man's using you. I'm going to kill him. And you know, have you wiped out? You wiped out? Remember, seven shot. get through. Hello? Hello, are you still there? Yes, I'm yes, still here. Sure your husband will understand. Yes. Why don't you talk to me about it tomorrow? We'll work the whole thing out. Call me the first thing in the morning. Good night.
taking a bow. The audience is giving him a standing ovation. They won't let him go. He's most effective, most effective. It's a very moving moment, ladies and gentlemen. And now he's returned to the rostrum. The audience is still applauding. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of our concert. Hello? Are you still holding? Yes, of course I'm still holding. And for God's sake. Charles, what's the matter? A madman is broken into the house. Complete stranger, never seen him before. He's got hold of my gun. Quickly, call the police. He's coming back. He's... Charles. Charles. He's been cut off. Give me that. Should be all right. Where's your wife? She's calling the police. Waste. Uh, nothing upstairs. Window force at the back. Blood. I wonder who left this. Nordek? Yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry, sir. No one else is allowed in. But I am a personal friend of the Strict instructions from the inspector, sir. But I'm a personal friend. I'm sorry, sir. Where is he? Where's my husband? Was nobody here, madam. What do you mean? 
Well, we found the house deserted when we arrived. Deserted? But on the phone, my husband said the man had a gun. Oh, we haven't found a gun here either, madam. Oh, we're still searching the grounds. around on the field. I couldn't believe it. And all those people shouting and carrying on. It was incredible. It really... Oh, bye-bye. So you uh, didn't actually hear a shot over the phone? No, but there's blood. Oh, when a man is shot, there's, he's likely to bleed a lot more than that, madam. No, I, uh, I think it's more likely your husband struggled with the man and one of them was cut. Probably when he heard the phone ringing, the man lost his nerve, panicked, and your husband chased after him. Anyway, we've, uh, we've put out a call for him and we should pick them up pretty soon. Meanwhile, we'll get the fingerprints checked. Is that all? Well, there's nothing much more we can do here, madam. But my husband may be hurt. Well, I doubt it. Otherwise, he'd still be here. No. When he gets fed over chasing around the streets, he'll probably come home, and then uh, you could ask him to phone us, if you would. And you're not going to leave a man here, then? Oh, we've got to start looking, madam. Oh, you'll be all right. The only person I'd to come back here is your husband, and, uh, well, you're not afraid of him now, are you? Fish, eh? Yeah, a little highly strung. him twice from over there. When Dr. Nordic fell, he knocked into the trolley. Well, that's why you're lying. It went almost exactly as you planned it last Saturday in the study. Of course, your telephone call was a bit late and Peter made one or two mistakes. Like this. But otherwise, it went almost exactly as recorded. Recorded? Yes, I deposited the tape in my bank for safekeeping. Right. Hey, George. Are you busy tonight? Oh, breaking and entering over at the Nordic place. Dr. Nordic? Oh, that's right. We haven't found him yet. He probably chased after the bloke who broke in. Go on. Oh, there's a gun in it somewhere, but... Uh, we don't know who's got it. See. Is it fine to Not exactly. <laughs> but that's blackmail. It's not worse than murder. Peter would never agree to it. I think he might, since you're involved. What did you do with... I took it in my car to the river. And the gun. I think I'll go to bed. I expect you'll want to ring Peter. I mean, you're staying here. Oh, yes, of course. Till this business is over. 
Otherwise, you'll be all alone. Anything I can get you? Good night. Yeah, yeah, I've got to go and see her about that new dress. Uh, oh, someone's buzzing. Hang on a minute, love. Hello? Mr. Marriott, please. Mr. Marriott, can you hang on a second? I'll see if he's in. Drink this. It'll make you feel better. Peter, Eileen knows. Oh. When we were in the study, the tape had been left running. No. heard it all. Are you sure? And last night she was outside watching. What is she going to do? Nothing. If we do as she says. She wants money. No, Peter. She wants you. But you must know it's impossible. I love Anne. Yes, you proved that. Well, what else do you expect me to say? Well, if you love her, I don't suppose you want to see her in jail for murder. What can you hope to gain from this? Well, not what you think, I suppose, but something that's important to me. Respect, recognition. I don't think that's asking too much. And what if I refuse? I shall have to take the tape to the police. You realize you've made yourself an accessory. When the police hear the tape, I, I don't think they'll have time for any wild accusations you may throw at me. Look, I don't want to push you, but the police will be here shortly, and I, I shall need to give them an answer. I'm sorry. Never mind what he says. If you give the tape to me, then I promise you... Well, it's not your promise I want, Mrs. Nordek. It's his. I never drink this. Or perhaps I do.
couldn't have been there more than a few hours. He thrown from the bank. And the body went with the current. A body? Yeah, we'll leave them to look for the body. You and I are going to have another little chat with Mrs. Nordick. Do you know who owns these, Mrs. Nordick? Yes. They're my husband's. Where did you find them? In the river. The, does that mean... I'm sorry. We'll drag the river, of course, but I'm afraid it flows very fast. Oh my God. Now, the man who broke in obviously fooled your husband into chasing him, hid round a corner and then attacked him. Which suggests to me that the man came here specifically to kill him. But how could he? On the phone, my husband said he'd never seen the man before. On the phone? Oh, yes. So he did. Oh, this is Peter Marriott, a friend of my husband and me. Peter, this is Detective Inspector Nash. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Well, I'm afraid I can't stop for a chat. I've just had to bring Mrs. Nordick some rather unpleasant news, sir. So you've arrived in good time. Good day, madam. Oh, by the way, sir, I wonder if I could have your address, just in case we want to ask you a few questions. 17 Piper Court, Chelsea. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. No, 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 no. Never seen the man before. That's what he said. But Mrs. Nordick was holding the phone, sir. He was shouting so loudly, even I could hear. Have you known Dr. Nordick long? Oh, yes, such a long time. Haven't we, dear? And you've heard his voice before on the phone? No, 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 no. Not as far as I can remember. Then how can you be sure, sir, it was him on the line? His wife called him Charles. Surely she wouldn't be mistaken her own husband's voice. No. No, of course she wouldn't. <laughs> ah, Mr. Marriott. I'm glad I've caught you here. I've got one or two questions I'd like to ask you, if you don't mind. Of course not. Could you tell me how you spent last Saturday? Saturday? Um, with some friends of mine at a flying club in Booker. Would you like a drink, Inspector? No, thank you, sir. How long did you spend there? Most of the day. And you left? Oh, about 5.30 to 6, I suppose. Then what? Then I drove straight home. Which is, uh, 17 Piper Court, as you know. Oh, yes. It's a block of flats. Yes. What time did you arrive, sir? <sighs> About five to seven. No one saw you arrive, I suppose? Yes. I noticed the receptionist, but uh, whether she saw me or not, I don't know. Why, did you creep in the back way? I had just come from the garage. What then? Then I went straight to bed and fell asleep. No dinner? I was tired. You had a rough day, eh? I would say a busy day. Tell me, Mr. Marriott, have you ever handled a gun? Not since National Service. I see. Would you say it was physically possible for you to have driven here, shot Dr. Nordek, hidden the body, and still got home around the time you mentioned? Or perhaps a little bit later? A good deal later. Yes, I suppose so. And what is your candid opinion of Mrs. Nordek's relations with her husband? Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Nordek. Perhaps you'd like to step outside for a moment. No, it's all right. Well, Mr. Marriott? They were not as harmonious as he would have liked many people to suppose. Peter, in case the officer wants to ask me some questions, don't you think we ought to tell him about... What's this, Mr. Marriott? Are you hiding something up your sleeve? Nothing that concerns you. I'd rather he knew whether it concerns the investigation or not. 
Well, perhaps I'd better be the best judge of that. Look, I've answered your damn questions. There is nothing else. You think he should tell him, don't you, Mrs. Nordick? Yes. Anne. Well, Mrs. Nordick? Peter and Eileen are engaged to be married, that's all. I see. Oh, it's been a secret for a while. I didn't want people to think that on top of Dr. Nordick's death, we would... Of course, as soon as there's some definite news of Dr. Nordick... No need to worry about that, no need at all. Have you any more questions? Not just at the moment, thank you, madam. Oh, uh, congratulations. So you're back to loser this time. Tea, sir. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I put my foot right in it. He's not after the blonde. He wants to marry the secretary. So where does that put us? Right back where we started. Well, tomorrow I suppose we'd better take another look at that bloody river. kept upstairs. Yes, I knew. I was only a cup of tea. Come on. It's a lovely night. I was looking at the stars. I thought you were cold. Hmm, well, it's, um, it's warmer down here. of me. 
Good job the ground was wet. I thought you were indoors. I just came out for a breath of air. Don't you smoke menthol? Oh, when I can get them, yes. How long has this door been locked? Very well. Is it locked? Seems to be. Perhaps the doctor kept the keys in his study. Oh, yes. Yes. It's not bloody surprising. I've nearly lost a man down there already. Oh, let's pack it in, Doug. I'm tired. More trouble with the wife? Yeah, they've both been on at me. And all because of that bloke down in the bottom of the river there. I hope the sharks get him. You want to try further down the river tomorrow? Ah, oh, what's the use? We could chase him halfway to China and never find him. You could turn up the gun. And all you turned up so far is a load of old tin cans. Sorry, the damn water's cloudy. Oh, let's go home. Taking the plunge. Never thought you'd make it. Hope it makes you happy. Well, one of us had better be. Or you make it sound as if you're going to the hot seat. Why don't you go and get rid of your copy? I'm flying off to Bond tomorrow. Are you going to stay on to the house? I shall go back north. I still have friends there. I was prepared to have Charles killed because I want to you. Maybe we're not so different. I don't want us to see each other again. Do you mean that? Let's keep something. Make us what she called surprise dinners. She was outraged by the price of electricity. She used to think it hurt our eyes. So whenever my father was away, we, we used to put candles on the table. Of course, those hurt our eyes even worse. But anyway, it was fun. We used to have competitions to see who would be the first to guess what we were eating. Do you want coffee with your dessert? Thank you. You know, you might even come to like me. Anyway, I'm not afraid of being hurt anymore. of the refrigerator. I took the sheets off my bed and uh, put the spare blankets away, so I think everything's ready. I'm flying to Sydney next week. Peter said he'd ring and confirm the bookings. I know you're glad to see me go, Mrs. Nordic, but I'm... I am sorry.
No? Yes. Oh, you have? That's marvelous. Yes, yes, I'm just waiting for the taxi and then I'm going to go back to my place. Hmm. Yes, why? He wants to speak to you. Oh, please. I'm sorry, Peter. She's just left the room. Yes, yes, well, I'll meet you there, then. I'm looking forward to it. Goodbye. Well, that's the taxi. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello? Hello. Where do we go board? In about 20 minutes. Oh, well, there's the tickets there. Can I see? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Can I have another scotch, please? Could I have a tomato juice, please? And a tomato juice. Do you think I'll be too hot with this? Perhaps. Where's your luggage? Well, it was weighed and taken away. Wasn't that right? Yes. Look, excuse me. I'll be back in a moment.
At a special inquest held today in London, the jury brought in a verdict of murder by person or persons unknown on Dr. Charles Edward Nordick. The doctor, a famed columnist and authority on marriage relations, disappeared from his home three weeks ago. Great Britain has a new teenage swimming champion. She is 13-year-old Veronica Lamb from Nottingham. Hello? Anne, we saw it on television. Oh, you must feel terrible. Are you sure you wouldn't like to come and stay with us till you're ready to go? No, dear, I can't. Are you sure? Quite sure. Well, as you like. Have you seen that young man? I haven't heard from him recently. Oh. No. I'm sorry. Are you sure there's nothing we can do for you? Yes, quite sure. Oh, well, you will keep in touch with us, won't you? I will. Good. Good night. Good night. What's this, my dear, bearing the past, starting life anew? But we have so many blissful years ahead of us. Stay where you are. Sit down. You know, when I first played over the tape, I nearly wept. Your naivete was incredible. As if all you have to do to kill someone is to take a gun Aim it and pull the trigger. Charles. <laughs> no, my dear. It takes more than blanks for a start. There was blood on you. Oh, yes. In my enthusiasm, I fell and hit my head. But Eileen took care of me. Very loyal secretary. Puts her employer's interests above anybody else's. She should make Peter a very adequate wife. You knew. Yes, she very nicely loaned me the tape, and I had six days to make the arrangements. All the girl needed was a little encouragement and a little financing. The least I could do in exchange for her loyalty. Extraordinary how justice will out. Well, I guess I'd better go phone the police and tell them I'm back. I must have caused them an awful headache. No. On second thought, I'll take a bath first. It's freezing outside. Bring me a whiskey upstairs, will you? I loathe you. And I despise you. I am leaving this house tonight and never... Haven't you forgotten something? I still have the tape. I'm sorry, darling. 
but we're together till death do us part. Now bring me that drink. Oh, by the way, that barn could stand with the spring cleaning. You know, if you fixed it up, make a lovely flat. Yes, I know. And he can use it any time. Em, I'm waiting. I have to take him a drink upstairs to his bath. Then he's going to phone the police. What for? To tell them he's come back to life. There was an inquest this afternoon. They think he's dead. Where does he go? On the desk in the study, what? What was the verdict? The actual words? Murder. My person or persons unknown. But... That was three weeks ago. I'll get his drink. He won't need it. Oh. 